everyone. Welcome back. Uh, today, we're doing the 2024 Top 10 Third Baseman with our expert ranker, Joe Bond. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Hey, what's going on, man? <laughs> Where's the excitement from the pre-show where we're talking? I mean, you... I just... if, if nobody knows this while they're... They, they now will, but the last few this whole week that we've been recording, uh, my back is killing me. So right now, it's... Uh... Yeah, it's affecting it's affecting my mood, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll push through. I'm a professional. Uh, um, okay, I like to tell well, myself I am. <laughs> well, I'm going to push through here with um, the way we pay our bills, and that is to tell everybody to come on down, become an all access member of Fantasy Six Pack dot um, Subscribe to become an all access member. You can use our Discord. You'll be using the fantasy cheat sheets and the promo code of F Six P M L B Twenty Four will get you fifteen percent off. Also, we tell everybody because I am a believer and I've used them myself for almost 10 plus leagues now, um, you know, start your league or look at moving your league over to Fantrax. Some of the deepest tools that you'll have, some of the best support. They're really on top of things. And I've just enjoyed um, all my moves uh, that I brought of my leagues over from Yahoo, CBS, just to name a few um, really fantastic uh, tools over there at Fantrax. So. Now that we've covered all the important stuff, uh, Bill Payne and everything in between, uh, let's get into the top 10 list. And we do that by making fun of Joe. Um, and, no, I'm kidding. Uh, by talking about his uh, uh, outside the top 10. And we'll just talk about the much, uh, I don't even know a nice way to put this, um, destroyed upon, talked mess upon, MLB Network top 10 players right now at every position. Again, I'm going to tell you this one more time. If you want to just have a small taste of the issues that rankers have, uh, go over there, type in MLB Network Top 10 and uh, go to Twitter or X or whatever it's called this week. And you'll just see a lot of capital letters, a lot of I can't believe you left this guy out. And a lot of the reason why I don't rank anybody ever. Uh, so a couple names here that I see off your list, Joe. Uh, DJ LeMayhew and Justin Turner. I don't expect either to have a massive year. Uh, but, you know, why did you leave them off? Because mm. <laughs> they're not very good for fantasy. Good enough. Uh, yeah, I think we spent more time than we need to on either one of those guys. Uh, the two, the two kind of cool names uh, that I would like you to just kind of say is um, how far off was Josh Young and uh, Key Brian Hayes? Uh, they were they were probably eleven and twelve to be honest with you. Um, we know Josh Young uh, had had a fantastic season, plays for that great Texas offense. Um, you know, young guy, so just I, I think he can improve even more. I. Would I be shocked if he jumps into the to the top ten at the end of the season? Absolutely not. Uh, but just rankings right now say he's not. Uh, okay, Brian Hayes um, finally started to put stuff together. It's been a man the 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 once highly touted prospect, right? Like he was the right. next big thing, right? Um, right? You know, he had that twenty four game sample in twenty twenty five home runs. Uh, 376 batting average. Everybody was like, oh boy, here he comes. <laughs> he figured it, it all out. Not, it did not work. The problem is the dude also can't stay healthy, so that's not helping. Yeah. But he had, I will say, he had a strong finish to 2023. Batted 299, had 10 home runs. Um, the, uh, the steals aren't quite what I think everybody was hoping for. But, uh, you know, it's not a total zero. But, yeah, he's look, he was looking like a much better player there the second half. So maybe he'll carry that over. Um, but, yeah, not yeah. ready to put him in the top ten quite yet. And he, he's too good for AAA. I mean, he's, he's definitely quad A right now. Um, but I, I think the talent's there. But like you said, if he can stay healthy and, and is able to, you know, develop, um, I, I definitely see him being within the top ten. But, yeah, and Josh Young, I expect great things from him this year. And, um, have him within my personal top 10, but lo lo love uh, all those comments right now. So let's break out your top 10, sir, with number 10, whenever you're ready for the amazing transitions that we have been talking so much about, and that is Royce Lewis. Mr. Lewis, I mean, he's what I expected from Kebron Hayes. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, right? I much. mean, Lewis is, I mean, just, I'm, 
I, I can't put enough on him. I, I think, and the thing is, is somehow he's going to get better. I just, just, there's a lot there that can obviously be improved upon, but he's, he's pretty, it's pretty great. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Just pretty great stuff. Uh, go ahead. Tell me why you have Lewis ranked where you got him. Yeah. I mean, you, you like a lot of what you see here. Uh, sh- small sample size. So, that's why he's still farther down the list. Like if sure. he had done this over a full season, probably you see him a little higher up. Uh, but just you know, the 58 games, 217 plate appearances, you know, 15 home runs. That's pretty solid. Six stolen bases, uh, 52 RBI, bat at 309 too. Now that's projected to come down pretty far as expected was 264. Or so right. uh, a pretty inflated bat at two at 254. But well, I mean, like the. He performed on a less than stellar Minnesota Twins teams Twins team last year. So, um, you, you like to see that from from these young players that they come in and they can just perform right away. That, that always, not always, but usually leads to pretty good things. <laughs> What I also like to see, too, is uh, young players that go back down to AAA because they're rehabbing or whatever and just destroy the level is what he did. I mean, 51 plate appearances in AAA, six home runs, 11 yeah. runs scored. And I mean, again, the inflated K rate, but I mean, a 422 ISO. Yeah, he's way too good for that level. Um, and I love seeing just kind of that, show, you know, not playing down to competition, but just absolutely you know, blowing it out of the water. And he absolutely did that. Yeah, that's the one thing holding him back, that playing time. And, and can he stay healthy? But, wow, that was electric. 15 home runs. I mean, I expected power, but that's that was a lot. It felt like yeah. every time I was logging in, he was he was hitting it out of the park. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't – I'm not going to say, you know, that's going to project over a full season. Uh, he had a pretty inflated home run to fly ball rate, 21%. Right. That's, that's pretty high. So, you know, right. a lot of things went in his favor, but – you know, it, it, I still think he's going to be a, a very good player and somebody that you're going to be very happy drafting uh, at third base. Yeah, Streamer has him projected and at uh, 27 and 28 home runs, uh, right around 80 runs scored and about right around um, 88, 89 RBIs. Uh, you know, getting getting him uh, lower in the rankings here, I'll, I'll take that all day. But I think that's somebody you're not going to be able to sneak out past the fourth, fifth round uh, with with some of the uh, the way he finished with that flourish. But definitely loving uh, what I'm seeing him. Uh, in yeah, Royce things. Lewis's uh, ADP is 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 very very high high right now at 59 Ooh. no way oh no okay i love royce lewis but not at 59 um i was i was guessing uh yikes you know i kind of like this part where i guess the adp and i'm absolutely blown away with what it actually is this is that wow really ronald acuna's number one what what <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to number nine. All right, all right shut up. Um, eight, all right, Yandy Diaz, we've seen him already on uh, one of our top 10 lists. So he's uh, one of our repeat customers. So we don't need to go too far into Yandy Diaz. But I do want to reiterate for those people that are just maybe seeing this versus our first base, um, you know, rankings and things of that nature. You know, people constantly talking about, um, you know, y- Yandy uh, not breaking out yet or not uh, playing enough because, you know, he's with the Rays and things of that nature. And I made the joke that, you know, he could be a relief pitcher next week. Uh, games played 137 last year, 137 the year before, and then 134 uh, in 2021. And ga- uh, games played, I'm sorry, uh, played appearances 600, 558, 554, uh, 541. I, I mean, that's pretty consistent. Uh, so for him to give you either third base or first base eligibility is great. Uh, again, you know, we're seeing 20 plus some runs, 95 runs scored with 78. I, you know, I felt like the Rays were kind of in limbo as a lot of fantasy players were uh, with the Franco kind of news and trying to figure out where, what their identity was, where they're, you know, where they're going to kind of get that pop and having people kind of have to switch roles uh, with, I'm expecting never to see, uh, Franco play again in the Rays uniform with more and more uh, news come out. Uh, you know, I, I think it's a little bit better this year where they can go in and say, okay, we know who our team is. This is who we expect. Um, and I, I expect uh, another great kind of consistent year at Diaz. Uh, not, not, you know, not door blowing off. If he hits another 20 home runs, I, I'd be impressed. Uh, but uh, some of these other numbers are great. It'd be 10, 10% walk rate mm-hmm. and 15% K rates. You can hang your hat on that. 
Yeah, well, I mean, just my, you know, go back and check out the first base episode if you if, if you want the full breakdown of him. But, you know, he's a, he's a good hitter. Is the power replicable? I'm not really sure. You know, he's never done this before, even in this about the same amount of plate appearances and everything else. So, um, you know, expect a, a bit of a drop off from last season, but he's still going to be a very solid hitter in a solid lineup. And it's he's just going to be good across the board outside of speed. All right, I I, I got to do this one. Uh, Yandy Diaz, what is his ADP? Is it? Um, should I make it, you guess first? Yes, make me guess. Um, Yandy Diaz. All right, so Royce Lewis was fifty ish. Uh, Yandy Diaz, I got to put him at what eighty six. Wow, eighty seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally got one close. Yeah, I'm like, Holy cow, that was good. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I and I, I swear to you, if you watch all these shows that we've done, you can tell that I am not cheating because I've been off. No, because you've been wrong. Way, <laughs> way, way wrong. So wow, to be even close, that's that's amazing. I that was can. Good. Oh, that was good. Yeah, good wow. You, I'm gonna tell my I'm gonna tell my kids. Uh, all right, <laughs> number eight. What do we got? Right. Another repeat. But a fun one. Uh, yes, Ellie De La Cruz, who, uh, if we, what were we saying his uh, ADP was? Because uh, it was something that I got so scared. Was it 20 something last show? Uh, no. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. Love me some Ellie De La Cruz, but 20, yikes. Uh, I mean, if, lo- if, if somehow like cut ins from MLB from MLB TV or ESPN counted as far as your fantasy stats, Right, you know, I I'd, I'd be all in. It's right. twenty eight. No way, right. no way. I'm right, at this guy, at this I mean, at, that, at that point, people are looking at. We said this last time. People are looking at the stats, you know, and in that that really fast start, it was all exciting. He just shot out like a like a rocket um, right. early on, but man, it really went downhill and hard for him. Um, yep. So, and, and that's the thing. Careful. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, we rookies are going to have to adjust and because pitchers are too smart, there's too much data, there's too much, you know, analytics, there's too many things. Um, and now with, you know, the, the pitch calm and, and being able to do all these things, there's too much going on. And people are thinking, well, you know, with the, the pitch clock, uh, you know, it plays against a lot of these younger players as well, you know, for them to kind of go through the progression. And, and so I, I expect good things from him. I, he's still much watch t- must watch TV, especially at that home park. But let's look at these projections real quick, right? So 21, 69, 71. Let's go back to Yandy. 20, 93, 68. So 30, well, sorry, no, take that back. But so 60 picks later, I can get basically the same guy. Yes, I know everybody, you know, he, he had a great start, but the long slog of the season. I mean, I can get a solid floor with the Andy Diaz sixty uh, picks later. I'm taking that all day and filling yeah, some I mean, you're missing, the, you're missing the speed for sure, right? Absolutely. Uh, but you're not getting crushed in the batting average potentially. I mean, if you know, I expect a little you know, positive regression for for Cruz here in that department. But yeah, I mean, and look, he's gonna go and be fire for a couple of weeks at a time. Right, multiple times this season. That's just the type of player I feel like Ellie Dela Cruz is going to be, especially early on. But over the, the long haul, man, right. you're going to have to deal with the. And he's like almost impossible to bench because you just know that potential <laughs> is there. It's impossible. He could literally hit three home runs in a game, or he could strike out four times in a game. Yeah. Um, and I, it, he, but. It's it's one or the other. There's no like middle ground sometimes with him. But and at the same time too, like I still love that highlight where in two pitches he went from first to second, stole first to second, and then on the next pitch he stole second to home because of the overthrow to third base. But and he's electric, and the he- helmet came off, and it's one of those oh, you yeah. know iconic photos from last year. And so yes, the stolen bases are huge, but you're gonna have buyer's remorse week to week. I mean, let's just I mean, be honest. His K rate has never been good even in the minors right. and that's right. in the minors you can get away with that a little bit more if you're just talented and you you know you're gonna hit below average pitching a lot of times right. guys that are never gonna make it to the majors and the majors man they're gonna make you pay for it so yep. yeah and, and when they're sl- 
when they're slumping, uh, when you're when you start to slump, they they uh, they're not going to be nice to you either. Like here's a meatball to get you back on you know track, kid. No, they're yeah. gonna absolutely <laughs> eat away at you. So yeah, Ellie Dela Cruz, one of the coolest, most fun things uh, people to watch uh, in baseball. Frankly, I mean he's must watch TV, but at that price, there's no way he's on any of my teams if that's where he's being drafted. So okay. all right, number seven. The man who disappointed me, along with a lot of Cardinals, uh, last year, Nolan Arenado. And the thing is, I was so disappointed that I didn't even realize, you know, kind of his end of year stats. You know, it's one of those where I was like, oh, let me look him up. Because, again, it's when you go on your gut feel of what you thought you're getting out of him. I was thinking 23, 22 home runs. Um, you know, the RBIs were, you know, a lot lower. I was definitely was penciling them in at a hundred. And then again, the, you know, the 71 run scored is just a big bright light to how bad the Cardinals, uh, team was last year again for the Cardinals in general. Uh, but you know, they weren't scoring runs. They definitely weren't driving people home. Um, so it's, it's a mishmash here. I, I'm a huge person to tout the Cardinals organization. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just was, you know, going into last year, I was like, oh yeah, you know what? He's going to bounce back. The Cardinals are going to make adjustments and man, they were not making it on the pitching side, mm-hmm. uh, relief pitching and the batting. It was just, it was just a mess. And I, you know, I, is it all because everybody's getting older, the age, is it because, you know, they lost their magic? I, I'd rather bet on an organization that has constantly shown the ability to make adjustments and, and do the, you know, player development than not. Uh, but, you know, going into that age 33 season, what are you thinking here uh, with Nolan Arenado? I know you have him, you know, uh, where you have him uh, right now ranked, but at the same time, are we seeing a bounce back here? I, I, I don't think so. I think this is what you're going to get from him. Uh, maybe a bit more power. Um, right. You know, the, the one thing like, in reality, like, so his power has dropped the last three seasons, right? Well, really right. the last four seasons. So if you sure. get rid of the COVID season, right? Right. 41 home runs and 34, then 30, then 26. So it has dropped right. every season. Runs and RBIs drop slowly as we go along, right? But even last season, 103 RBI, you were still like, all right. I mean, you'll, you'll deal with the 73 runs scored. You would hope he could, you know, you would love for him to get back to the 2019 season where he, you know, was 112 and 118. but you got to remember that was also Colorado. And so a little inflated there. Right. Right. But you still liked what you got, even when you moved to St. Louis, right. You know, 34, 81, 105, that first season. The thing that has really kind of bounced up and down since he's been in St. Louis is the batting average. Yeah. First season was bad and then not bad, but 255, not, not his standards. Right. 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 Then he bounced back to 293 and you're going, okay, he got the the big contract bugaboo off his back, right? He's good to go. We're ready to roll, right? No, back down to two sixty six, right? I don't, it, it, it's really hard to say kind of what the driving factor was. Um, you know, he exit velocity was a little bit lower. Um, you know, hard hit rate was around the same. It it wasn't really anything except that he was striking out a little bit more so iso was down it just it all just sort of it's just a lot of little things all kind of added up to less batting right. average and i think you know we said this with with goldschmidt the cardinals were kind of a mess last year and you know maybe losing molina was bigger than anything we could have ever expected right who knows <laughs> right well you know and the other things too right going a little bit deeper on on batted balls i mean the number of kind of um, of ground balls that he hit last year was a huge spike up. Uh, obviously, if you spike up, you're going to have less fly balls. But, you know, his line drive rate stayed the same. Sure. Yeah. But his fly balls came way down and his ground balls kicked up by almost, you know, by almost 10%. Uh, and he became, you know, he continues his kind of pull-happy approach um, that he's shown the last three years. That's fine if you want to be pull-happy, but you got to be doing some, you know, really hitting those line drives um, and, and getting that ball in the air, you know, pull happy and grounders is, is not good for anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I, um, I'm going to, 
I want to see this, you know, trend change. I, I love watching Nolan Arenado. I watched the love them in Colorado, uh, but I'm, I'm concerned. Uh, this is absolutely yep. one of those picks where I am. I'm picking because of the organization. I'm picking because he's a veteran. He's 33 this year. It's, you know, he's not ancient, but he is, he's old by baseball standards, but I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a really the lowest I've had him ranked forever right i don't think i've ever had him ranked this low at third base so yeah um total discount his adp is uh okay so let's see um so that was 80 so i'm saying nolan Arenado is 64 60 oh god i'm getting oh man i'm so cheating (laughs) i'm not i swear (laughs) you're looking at my screen right now (laughs) oh two monitors i'm kidding i just (laughs) I, I, I don't have 500 tabs open. <laughs> yes, I have to. I, yeah, I was about to say, I'm like, what? Uh, you don't pay me enough. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, love you, Joe. Um, as I use my dial up internet. Um, anyways, uh, all right, number six. Uh, Alex Bregman. Yeah, so the, the guy with the, the guy. So this is going to be interesting this year uh, for a couple of reasons, right? Um, and you talked about this a little bit in the article. This is his contract year. And there is some talk about, you know, Zach Desaro, uh, the prospect, you know, they have him in a uh, trip, you know, double A moved him up and, and the Astros have him coming up and he's hitting the ball pretty well as uh, well. Are they going to let Bregman walk? Um, you know, I know he's a free agent in 2025, there's just a lot kind of right into this year, or does he have one of those years where we just saw with Mr. Cubby himself, even though he's, only, <laughs> you know, just absolutely destroy the ball and, you know, make him that year 30 contract just absolutely pay off for him. What are you seeing here with um, Alex Regman? I mean, the superstar himself. I mean, look, I think Alex Bregman is going to be Alex Bregman again. I said it in the article. It was like the shortest write-up I had for any player in this whole <laughs> yes, series. Yes, I saw that. It was... I, I looked at it and was like, uh, yeah, okay. he He's just a dude, honestly. Like, There's a bunch of guys that are going to give you similar numbers. Um, at Some of them higher ADP, some of them lower ADP. Uh, 25 home runs. You know, he's going to score a good number of runs. Scored a number, good number of RBI averages. It's it's there. It's not great. It's not bad. No speed. Um, you know, you want to count on just something reliable. He's your guy, right? Um, you know, if you need a third base, it, it, when he starts popping into the draft rooms, and you know, or or our cheat sheet kind of says, hey, you know, start looking at third base. Here's some guys. He's top of the list. He's somebody. If you want a third baseman, something reliable safer than Arenado at this point probably um which is why he's ahead of him then Bregman's a guy if you want a little more upside wait and take a cruise or a Royce Lewis something like that um or go earlier and take one of the top five guys wait did you say wait and take a cruise like a Della Cruz because I thought he was in the top 20 can you really wait for the <laughs> oh true that's right yeah, yeah, I was yeah, about yeah. to Good I, point. sorry Good I was I was yeah I, I was like wait yeah, a minute Bre- Bregman's uh, ADP is uh hold on hold on wait 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 not wait, wait. <laughs> okay Bregman ADP well, not uh, okay. surprise uh 46 72 I wow I love oh, his ADP God. You're getting him at Yandy Diaz range. What? Oh man! Of course, I take Alex over Yandy any day of the week. I mean, don't. It's, it's a round earlier, right? But that's I'll take that's, that. Yeah, I'll take that premium. I have uh, a feeling I'm gonna have quite a bit of Alex Bregman on my team. Yeah, because yeah. the ADP it needs to be higher. Yes, yeah, that's, that's a wonderful ADP. I love it. Uh, sadly, I live in Texas, so I play a lot of against a lot of Texas fans, both Astros and Rangers. So I don't get a lot of Alex Bregman because of the Homer, the Homer uh, drafts I'm in. But um, yeah, when I'm playing the, in these national drafts, I will absolutely eat that ADP any day of the week. That's great. All right, sir. Uh, our top five finally. We have a repeat. Gunner Henderson. Henderson. It's so weird to see uh, an Oriole um, on our list here. I don't know how you do it, um, considering how much you don't like the Orioles. 
Uh, all right, uh, Gunnar <laughs> Anderson. We, we talked about him previously uh, in our in our other show. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let Let's talk more about how much we love some Gunnar. Yeah. So I mean, I said it in the shortstop preview. Right. You know, look. You know, he. I didn't like him last year, not because I didn't think he was going to be, you know, good at all, but right. but just thought his ADP was a little, a little inflated. Right. Um, I looked brilliant in April and May. He was horrendous. <laughs> right. Uh, but something clicked in June, and you know, twenty three percent strikeout rate down from thirty one percent. His batting average went from two hundred one up to two seventy six during that time. He hit twenty three home runs during that time. Um, you know his his. 52% hard hit rate, 92%, 92 exit velocity. Like he was clicking from June and on. Um, you know, he's got the tools to be yeah. able to jump up in this rankings list. Uh, but the guys ahead of him are really damn good. So he's got to have to, to. And the the one thing that really holds him back, I think, is he's not, he's not giving you any speed. There, you know, it's weird to say like third base. You're not getting a lot of speed from some of these guys. Um, I mean, you've got like the De La Cruz, you know, giving you 30 to 40. But then you get a lot of guys on this list here in this middle range that just give you next to nothing. Um, he's going to give you like a dozen, you know. But right. so that helps. So the guys ahead of him are likely giving you more, most of them at least. Yeah, and there's a couple of things that really, you know, struck me this last season as well. You know, when he was in that slump, there was never a chance, uh, at least, you know, from the front office, the managers, et cetera, that were saying, hey, we're going to, you know, bench him to get his mind right or anything of that nature. He played 150 games, so they allowed him to hit through it. Mm -hmm. And that show, you know, that's one of the concerns you always have with a younger player. Are they going to send him down? You know, what happens when he has a slump? Does he have that veteran? You know, Blah blah blah. No, third base is his base. He's he's not gonna he's not gonna. I'm um, oh, sorry. Or the infield in general is uh, not gonna be. You know, he's not gonna be sent down. He plays defense way too well, and obviously he uh, has a heck of a bat when it's available. Um, Hundred runs, twenty eight uh, home runs. I mean, it looks great now when you look at the full season numbers. But like you said, those first two months were just terrible. Mm -hmm. Gunnar Henderson. ADP of if it's in the twenties again, I'm just gonna throw up, but I'm gonna say 32. 35. <laughs> yes, baby. Third base down. Man, I just oh man, I let me just tell you, I am I, I I've never been more happy with in, in my entire life. Uh this is that's how uh terrible my life's been. Uh so <laughs> just, I'm, I'm amazing. All right, number four. Hmm. Excellent. Manny Machado, Manny yeah, Machado. yeah. I mean, I mean, look, Mister. Uh, I mean, let's talk about consistency here, right? You know, twenty-eight home runs in twenty twenty-one, twenty-two. Uh, so thirty-two and thirty, ninety-two runs, one hundred seventy-five. Okay, drop off there, and then one hundred six, one hundred two, ninety-one. I mean, no Soto, so maybe less runs scored. Uh, you would have thought. You would have more with Soto there last year. Like it didn't work. Whatever yeah, it, was going it, it, on last year with Soto being there, I don't know if it was just expectations and the stress of all of that with that team, but it was not working with them. I really am buying a bit of a bounce back for him. You've got to, if you just go based off of last year's stats, you're putting Gunnar Henderson ahead of Manny. Um, you really are. Um, right. But I'm believing in Manny's a very, very good hitter, proven commodity. We know it. We can trust it. I think we're going to get the bounce back. And um, yeah, but he's, he's just too good not to. Not okay. To but you just told me that Gunner doesn't give you stolen bases. And, you know, he's just somebody who barely gets above five uh, last couple of years, except, you know, um, nine and 12, right? Yeah. The outliers. But I mean, are we, is this bat that much better than gunners that you're able to say that, you know, the stolen bases don't matter with me. Yeah, this is a, I, I am. I am. And, and you got to also remember he missed time last year, right? right. So right. And he hit 30 in, in 138 games, 154 at bats. Right. So, um, the batting average dropped, you know, you know, you never know if he was actually like trying to play through an injury or what, but you know, 
we've seen consistently more and at least more often than not, he's had a couple meh seasons at first one in San Diego, especially right. where Manny's batting average isn't, you know, but Manny's sorry, Manny's batting average more often than not is above 275. Right. If not above 285. Like, so right. I'm expecting that to rise. Projections actually still have him down at like 270, uh, 269. Yeah, I just I uh, something, actually uh, think that would go higher than that. Sometimes so, these projections, so these projections seem a little wonky in the sense, like sometimes they it makes sense, like a big jump or whatever. And sometimes it looks like they almost like, oh, we'll just add four or add three or <laughs> minus four. Like it's like uh, you don't see, so, so you don't expect to jump back at all. Uh, they only also project him at 140 games. So they're expecting another, you know, uh, him to be injured. And it's funny uh, because, you know, before the 138, um, 150, 153, uh, you know, drop the COVID year, 156, 162, 156. And it keeps going. I mean, he's, 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 he's yeah. I mean, it's time. Like, I, right. I don't, yeah. I don't get it either. Yeah. So uh, uh, unless they know something we don't know, or maybe Juan Soto was holding him back, um, you know, giving him bad, you know, snacks. I don't know what the issue was. Yeah, maybe he or he was stealing his snacks. Maybe that's that's the reason he got traded. Who knows? Yeah. But I expect uh, big things next year uh, from Manny Machado as well. So let's go to number three, sir. Rafael Devers. De- is it Devers? De- Devers? Okay, sorry. It's Devers. I always say Devers. Um, so Devers. I used to. Then somebody said Devers, and I was like, all right, I'll run with it. Yeah. So, sure. All right. Our dog, uh, Rafael. Uh, we're not getting that's not sticking. Uh, so <laughs> we're not. We're not. No, I, I am not going to be making nicknames anytime soon. All right. So here's the thing if you would have asked me his age, I would have said 2930. I just, he's been around for forever. I mean, mm, this is cr- started cr- out super young. I mean, that's the thing. You forget he started at 20. Um, so age 27 season, we talk about how pivotal the age 27 season is definitely can reinforce previous, you know, previous highs or be the jumping off point, et cetera. I mean, last year, 33 home runs, 90 runs scored a hundred RBIs. And he played another, you know, 150 plus games, which he did in 2021 and just kind of reinforced that he's a force we reckon with and kept his K rate under 20%, which was again, key. yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, you, so the gains that we saw in 2022 stayed, you know, pretty, were pretty cemented slugging again, uh, staying above 500 for the third year in a row. I'm expecting some great things from a Red Sox team that was not supposed to, not contend, but not supposed to win as much as it did and kind of played a lot of close games and Devers was right. Devers Devers was right there in the middle of it all. Uh, So what are we expecting from Devers that you have him ranked here? Yeah. I mean, I I think just more the same, like the, the sort of trend uh, for the top guys here is just proven commodity, consistent player, that's what you're getting at the top here. They've all been elite at some point. Um, these top four guys, all first round picks at some point, maybe outside of Austin Riley, although you could argue he probably should have been. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think people just don't want to believe. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Devers is probably one of the best pure hitters in baseball, and he can get okay. the crap out of the ball too at the same time. So, like, you know, great plate approach. Uh, gonna hit for power. Another guy again. Not a lot of speed. There's really actually not a lot of speed at the third base group, except for like the back half. And then we're gonna get to one here soon. Manny right. has shown speed in the past. Just decided right. these last couple of years, like I don't want to run uh, for whatever weird reason. Um, he's also moved up and down in that lineup as he moves down in the lineup. Obviously, it's harder to run when you got guys in on base in front of you. Uh, but Devers is not somebody you're you're ever projecting stolen bases from. So. Um, yeah, speed, speed's never been the thing there for Devers. So, uh, but at the same time, like you said, uh, one, two, and three here are proven commodities. I'm sorry, Manny Machado as well. So, uh, these top four yeah. definitely are you know, proven commodities as well. So, in. yeah, so number two, number two, Austin Riley. 
So I love in your article uh, that you talk about kind of people are, you know, betting against Austin Riley there quite a bit, uh, not only just in how they're drafting him, but in, in, in real life, uh, the way he was drafted. Um, and, and there's a, a lot kind of, about, I don't know if they keep waiting for the other shoe to drop, so to speak. Uh, they're like, well, you know, he was good this time, but maybe not next time. Uh, and so, you know, I think all he's done, except for the COVID year, of course, is just hit and, and he continues in that organization. My goodness. First of all, they have the cheat code. Yeah. Well, well San Diego has the let's make your contract um, 65 year payout. Um, Braves have the cheat Groupon code to get everybody to yes. you know sign at a discount. Oh, uh, oh, you just uh, won the Cy Young. Um, oh, and you were an MVP. Great, you're going to give us a four year, uh, twelve million dollar contract. And like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, how they got Acuna uh, to sign his thing early on? Like, yeah. that makes I. None of it makes any sense. Yeah. And um, I mean, and, and Chapman, you know, up for, I mean, again, these are still numbers that I would love to retire on, but compared, compared to the market. Wow. Um, so, you know, the thing is again, uh, with Riley, age 27 season, again, big season, but last three years, 33 home runs, 38, 37. And, you know, the run shot up by almost 20. So, and that, Probably happened because he got even more firepower in the Braves lineup this past year, which he didn't think was possible. They're only going to get better. He's only going to score more runs because people are going to keep hitting him in. Uh, and the RBIs are going to be there as well. I mean, it's just those numbers from last year. If he can hit what he's projected for 665, six, so 650 plus plate appearances, those numbers are well within reach. There's nothing there that shows me that he's not going to hit 35 plus bombs, 100 runs uh, scored, and 100 RBIs. I mean, sign me up with, especially with a 279, uh, sorry, 281, 345 OBP and a 516 slugging. I just yeah. love it. There's just, just too much to love. The ball, yeah. I mean, look, I said it in the article, right? Like before the 2021 season, nobody wanted anything to do with him, right? He right. was. I don't even remember if he was drafted in 2021. Like I felt like he was a waiver wire guy. Um, you know, there was a lot of talk that the Braves were trying to bring in somebody else. I mean, he yeah. had that, that horrible K rate, right? right? You know, you throw the COVID year out because you just, you know, it's such a short sample size. I mean, good players were bad. Bad players were good. That year was a weird one. Um, yeah, he hit for power in 2019. You liked that, but you know the batting average was 226. Even then, in 2020, he hit for a little bit more power. Right. 39 batting average. Boom, 303. It was like what? <laughs> like where did that come from? Oh, his K rate went down. He was swinging a you know a lot less uh, you know stuff outside. Like right. the hard hit rate, live drives were up. Everything changed for the better. Um, and yeah, he's just stayed consistent, if not gotten better over the last two years. So two quick things I want to call out, right? WRC Plus, we talk about it all the time. Um, 100 is average. So the first two years, even with the COVID year, 85 and 88. And then it just spiked in 2021 to 136. So he's you know way better than the MLB average. And then war offensively, negative 7, negative 3.7, and then positive 26.4. So when we yeah. talk about... You know, that age 24 season, he, you know, he really changed up some his swing approach and a lot of other things as well. Uh, it, it shows up in the numbers big time. So definitely something that, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's baked into the price now. And, and we expect big things from him this next year, especially with that Braves lineup as well. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Number one. And let's be honest, uh, not a huge surprise here. Jose Ramirez. I mean, the way he's being drafted last year alone should you know, give you some inkling of what you should be expecting here. You know, uh, definitely first rounder in almost every draft. And he continues to show off in the Guardians lineup. I, I paused there for a second just to make sure I didn't make the mess up with Cleveland. Uh, but um, I mean, he, this is a guy that's giving you everything. Uh, the home runs were a little bit, you know, not, you know, 24 versus, you know, 30 ish, but 28 stolen bases. Yes, please. Um, 87 runs scored, 80 RBIs. And this is the part that I just, I wish I could highlight on the screen, like jo uh, John Madden 10.6 walk percentage and 10.6 K rate. 
that just tells you the anomaly that Jose Ramirez. I mean, he, if it was any other kind of hitter, like aside from Otani or something like that, I would that would surprise me. But nothing surprises me with Ramirez's kind of stats. He's just a professional hitter that is, you know, always in the talk of being drafted number one overall. Uh, sir, tell me all the great stuff about Jose Ramirez and why you picked him at number one. I mean, you you basically said it. Like you, you said everything, you know, that I would have said. I know some people are going to look at last year and say, oh, we had a down year. Maybe this is like, you know, the end of Jose Ramirez dominance. Right. I'd slow down on that, though. You got to remember, he was playing through an injury at the end of 2022. Right. Um, ended up getting surgery in November, I believe, of 2022. You know, he didn't miss any time, you know, injured UCL on his right thumb, right? Uh, right. He came out hitting pretty slowly in 2023 and, you know, just six home runs for, through the first two months. June is really when it got clicking. You know, he finished that month with a 330 batting average and seven home runs just that month alone. You know, and then we got more of what we expect from Jose Ramirez the rest of the season, right? Right. Yeah, right. you're not getting those numbers, you know, for the rest of the season, but... Right. You've got normal numbers from him the rest of the year. And and that's why I put him right back. at the, When I started the third base rankings, I wrote, just wrote down Jose Ramirez next. Like it wasn't even a question for me. Like right. the dude is, you know, 30 home runs, you know, potential easily, in my opinion, 30 stolen base. Like he's a 30, 30 guy with a really, you know, with a, with a good batting average. And, yeah, some of the counting stats may suffer because, you know, the Guardians aren't great. But, I mean, really good players can still have good counting stats, <clears throat> Bobby Witt, on <laughs> mediocre teams, right? Right. So, it can happen. You get on base enough, you're going to get you're gonna get hit in. You hit enough. Right. Hey, you hit home runs. You're going to get at least one RBI for every single one of those home runs. <laughs> You know, the thing is, I, you know, I think it's because where people were drafting him last year, definitely in the top 10, uh, you know, top five, five, top five. five, I was about to say um, definitely top five in in a a lot of, a lot of drafts I was in, uh, depending on kind of the makeup of the drafts. But, uh, you know, if you, if you draft somebody there and they have a stretch of kind of being, you know, uh, lower than expected, they're going to automatically in their mind, I don't care how the season turned out. You know, that was just a bad pick. And the thing is, like you said, you know, he was battling some injuries, but he's still an Ironman workhorse and was able to kind of make through. I just wanted to pinpoint some stuff here on StatCast, which I thought was really great. Well, uh, hey, hey, what, one second. Sure. I mean, another guy that we talked about just this past episode, we recorded the short stops. Same effect. Of, yep. You know, poor start, finish right. strong at the end, but people aren't going to care. Trey Turner. <laughs> Yep. And, and, and I said it, I said it during there, right. I'm, I'm happy to show my bias. I told you that before I looked at his stats, I had a different, you know, set of stats in my head, right. I expected the stolen bases to be a lot lower and all those things. And you're absolutely right. And I think it's just one of those biases that we have where when we play week to week, or if you're playing daily, you see those slumps and you just, it just, those get ingrained in your head. More than anything else. And uh, I mean, there's a few players like Ellie De La Cruz that we remember the highs way too much that we forget the kind of the lows. Yeah. But, but this, uh, this in particular, but some of the items, just in case you're thinking like, oh my God, it's, he's, you know, he's dropping off his, the number of hard hit events. So the number of times he hit the ball hard, right, uh, was actually high, the highest it's been ever <laughs> yeah for, for him and this includes the slump right now his max exit velocity was down by three you know three uh but his uh, his overall exit velocity right his his average was higher than it was the year before his launch angle was off by you know again two degrees i'm not expecting a lot of issues there um and his expected batting average and average was off by like 10 points uh and expected slugging was off by three that's point zero zero three you, I, the underlying stats are all there. Mm-hmm. This is a professional hitter, like I keep saying, and I don't like to use that term often, but you know what you're going to get. Yes, there might be some slumps, but Jose Ramirez, in the end, is going to power through and is going to give you what you want. He's locked in at number one. 
Mr. Bond, it's an absolute pleasure to see another top 10 list uh, in the books here. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, do you have anything to say before we uh, sign off here, Joe, other than the fact that go, uh, go Orioles? <laughs> Let's go O's. Nah, that's it, man. Uh, have right. a good one, and uh, see you all next time. Sounds great.